Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy. Today we are going to understand the shortcomings of mercantilism. What is mercantilism and why mercantilism is important? If it is important, why should we consider its shortcomings? Before that, it's important to understand the shortcomings of mercantilism. So that was the topic of this question in today's session. Let's get started. When we tell you about mercantilism, you could see that mercantilism is an economic school of thought. And this involves building a wealthy and powerful state. It was giving in emphasis to wealth. So it was Something that involves an economic school of thought which gave emphasis to wealth. This was something which dominated in the Western European economic thought as well as policies. And coming to the period of mercantilism, mercantilism was prevalent from the 16th century to the late 18th centuries. And mercantilism was saying that if you want to attain a favorable balance of trade, that is something which would be beneficial for you. It says that in order to attain a favorable balance of trade that would bring gold and silver into the country to maintain domestic employment, you have to give emphasis to wealth. So they were following a favorable balance of trade policy. They wanted more gold and silver to be brought into their own home countries. Why these are brought to the home countries? Because it believed that this school of thought or the economists who are supporting this school of thought believe that only with more silver, more gold, the country would become rich. A country that possesses more gold and silver is considered as more rich. If you have two nations, nation A and nation B, nation A is having something called 30 kilos of gold. This is just for a hypothetical example. Just to make you understand the concept, nation B is having 15 kg of gold. We could see that nation B is more rich as per the mercantilist, mercantilism school of economic thought. Now, let's have a look into the shortcomings here. They were always proposing a trade surplus, and how trade surplus comes? Trade surplus comes when the export is more than import. We usually consider this with respect to the payments received. So what happened? This would be something like the export receipts more than the import payment. So this is what the mercantilism wanted and we have to understand that whenever this thing prevails in the economy for a longer duration, there can be more inflow of money, more inflow of money and this more inflow of money will lead to something called increase in prices which could be called as inflation and inflation if it goes beyond the point is bad slight inflation is good but what happens if export receipts are always much much more greater than the import payments definitely the inflation that would be prevalent in the economy would be very high which won't be good but instead instead of bad scenario now Coming to the next show coming uh, with respect to American school of thought, they were proposing a government intervention. And also we could see that when it comes to mercantilism, the idea of government intervention was something that was opposed by certain other school of thought called the classical school as well as the physiocratic school especially the classical school they were giving emphasis to no government intervention
So this is how it happened. Now, this is one of the most important shortcomings. Mercantilism was king. The idea of mercantilism and following the idea of mercantilism, this would give rise to something called colonialism. What does it mean? It involves forming of colonies and a rule based on that. So many many European countries were needing some markets to sell their surplus products. So for the very same reason, you could see that many nations like England, France, Germany, Britain, they were actually competing in this particular race. And what happens at the end result here is that this has created enmity among different different nations. So there was a conflict in the world as a result of the colonialism and the race that happened as well as the competition that happened as a result of mercantilist ideas. Now, I was telling you that mercantilism was giving over emphasis to trade surplus. So what does it mean by trade surplus? Trade, trade surplus in some other word, you call it as something favorable when it comes to balance of pay. But many, many European countries were not able to get a favorable balance of trade or trade surplus for a prolonged duration. So this made them to suffer from failure. They tried to become self-sufficient by going for their own industry to their own different different industries to deal with their imports in order to reduce their imports they try to become self-sufficient but this had created some miseries they were doing something that were unable to be done by them and this created many miseries for the people who were the residents of such nations. Now, going for the next shortcoming, we could see that as a result of mercantilism, this idea was followed with a strong principle that the country can rise its interests of the other nations. And this is something that you cannot justify. Because when you consider trade, this is not a zero sum game. And in the zero sum game, what happens? In the zero sum, zero -sum game, a person would be winning and the other person would be losing. A person's victory would be exactly equal to the other person's loss. A person's gain would be exactly equal to another person's loss. So if two nations are uh, engaging in trade A and B as per zero, zero sum gain, if A gain, A gain means B would be losing. If A lose, A, a is suffering a loss, that means B is gaining. So this is not what exactly happens in a real life situation. In real life situation, we are not considering a zero sum game as far as trade is concerned. In usually, usually what happens in trade is that both the nations which are involved in trade would become benefiting parties. Both would have mutual benefit here. And this is not considered in the case of mercantilist ideas. Now, as I was telling you in the very beginning, these people, the supporters of mercantilism were giving over emphasis to some precious metals of gold and silver. They were not considering the role of natural resources. Actually, natural resources and all form the true wealth of a nation. And when it comes to, again, some very, very important aspect like human capital, the knowledge, these were not considered by mercantilism. All these were ignored. 
ignored by mercantilism. But now you could see that how human capital is playing a role in developing the nation is something which is very very crucial. Again, knowledge economy is also playing a very important role here, but these were not considered. But instead, neglected by mercantilism. So, what we could say here is that, as a result of all these problems that were there with respect to mercantilism, mercantilism was losing its relevance. It was losing its popularity. And later on, we could see that many other schools came, schools of thought came, and that made mercantilism to lose its importance, lose its relevance, popularity and fame. So that's all about the shortcomings of mercantilism. I hope you could understand. Thank you for watching. You can like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos. You can also join our free Tribune community. I'll be providing the link in the description box. Also, you can download the Learn Economy app for that also. You can see the link in the description box. That's it. Thank you for watching.